also have the Public Works Minister Juan Ejil. Standing there also is Brigadier yeah. Omar Khan. President here just uh, just met with the relatives of those injured and those who were perished, those who perished in the crash. We also have the, the head of Khan James Singh. Five members of the media, including four senior officers. President So we are at the Eugene Cry International Airport where we, where we are where we are awaiting the arrival of the survivors of the GDF crab, GDF helicopter, helicopter sorry which crashed in the Cuyuni Mazaroni region. Standing before us is President Joe Finale. Standing alongside him is Army Chief of Staff Brigadier Omar Khan. Next to him is the Public Works Minister Warner Jill, and then we have Prime Minister retired Army Chief of Staff, Brigadier Mark Phillips. Also here is Head of Kanu, uh, Mr. James Singh. The President would have just interacted with the, with the families of those who perished and the survivors. Um, standing just behind the, the President is former Government Minister Jennifer Westford, her husband, Retired Brigadier Gary Beaton is among the five who perished in that helicopter crash. Those who survived the crime are Lieutenant Andino Crawford and Crawford Lee Jackson. The five who died are retired Brigadier Gary Beaton. Those who died are retired Brigadier Gary Beaton, Colonel Michael Shahood, who was the commander of the 1st Infantry Battalion. We also have Lieutenant Colonel Michael Charles, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Welcome, and Staff Sergeant Jason Khan.
the arrival may be imminent. We're hearing the sound of a chopper. And we're seeing some movement uh, from senior military officials and from senior members of the Ghana Police Force also. This was such a tragic incident. The Bell helicopter that crashed was recently acquired by the government of Guyana to aid the Ghana Defense Force. out to the airplane which would be the one with the survivors president air finale leading that team We've seen one of the uh, survivors making his way out of the aircraft. Of course, the two survivors. Lieutenant Andy Crawford and Corporal Dwayne Jackson. The two survivors here this afternoon. We're seeing the EMS, emergency medical technicians moving out closer to the aircraft. They have ambulances on the outside waiting to ferry them off to the hospital. Uh, they went through early checks at a base close by to the crash site. There were doctors out there. Doctors actually spent the night with them, along with military personnel. But now they'll be taken to the hospital and, and for a full checkup, uh, likely to be admitted. The severity of their injuries are not known, but this must have had a psychological impact on them too, spending two nights in the jungle with those who lost their lives. And uh, you, you might not be able to see it, but they've just transported one of the soldiers onto that stretcher and President Ali is out there with the Prime Minister and all the military officials. Yeah. 
and they're now moving him around as you can see and see one of the relatives uh, of the injured rank uh, out there not sure which one that is but you've seen the relatives there they're the first able to go across there some of them crying And you're seeing all the relatives uh, going closer. Yeah. Lieutenant Andrew Crawford, who was one of the pilots on that helicopter, and uh, the other survivor, Corporal Dwayne Jackson. Some person's asking why is the process taking so long but um they're allowing the family members to meet with them first and have a little chat with them they're fully conscious and you're seeing some of the family from my view here some of the family are crying as they greet them i see the presidential party is now moving in we're being kept at a distance of course but you see the presidential party moving in there Present here finale, Prime Minister Mark Phillips, the Minister of Works, on Edge Hill, the head of Kanu, is also out there. The Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defense Force, Brigadier Omar Khan, is also out there. For those of you now joining us, we're coming to you from the Eugene F. Karaya International Airport at Ogle, where we just saw the arrival of the two survivors from that tragedy in Arau, a tragic helicopter crash that claimed the lives of five servicemen. Colonel Michael Shahood, who was the commander 
on that mission, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Wilkham, Brigadier Retired Gary Beaton, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Charles, who was of course the pilot, and Staff Sergeant Jason Kahn, who was a part of the Special Forces of the Guyana Defense Force. The two survivors who they've just brought out. Lieutenant Andio Crawford, who was the co-pilot on board, and uh, Corporal Dwayne Jackson. You were seeing some family members embracing each other there. Because it would have been a very uncertain time for them, from the time they lost contact with that aircraft, that helicopter, around 11.20 on Wednesday, and word only came about 24 hours after that they had spotted survivors and even at that time we weren't too sure who those survivors were if they all survived. Then late yesterday afternoon the Ghana Defense Force confirming that it had lost five of its service members. A very solemn afternoon here. President Dear Finale out there with the Prime Minister and the Chief of Staff of the Ghana Defence Force meeting those two survivors and you see the uh, presidential team drifting off and those two survivors are expected to be taken from here to the hospital where a medical team is waiting. There are medical professionals here. They were first seen by a medical team yesterday. A medical team spent the night with them in the dense forested area of Arau and remained with them throughout the night along with members of the special forces and members of the uh, search and rescue team. This afternoon, they were able to get them out from that area, get them to a nearby base that the GDF has set up, an aerodrome nearby, where another medical team was there waiting to do another assessment before allowing them to head out of that area. We were also told the bodies of the five service members who died are to be brought out this afternoon too. We were also told that a psychological team, a team of psychologists was in the area when they were able to get them out and they also met with them because as you can imagine, it must have been a traumatic time for them. And you see they now uh, have the ambulances coming onto the area.
as you can see there they're now uh, putting them into the ambulance two ambulances are out there the two survivors The ambulances were right here on the outside waiting. They just brought them onto the tarmac of the airport. As you can see, they're now moving out with them. They will be outriders uh, taking them into the hospital. And President R. Irfanabi uh, this afternoon asking all religions in Guyana to let Sunday be a day of prayer for the families of those who lost their lives, for the families of those who survived and for them too, and of course uh, for the nation. Of course, you know, all this is taking place even as the country is dealing with those acts of aggression from neighboring Venezuela. See some of the family members leaving now. How are you guys holding up? Your relatives of Crawford, you yeah, spoke with him briefly? Yeah. What's he doing? You spoke with him briefly? Yeah, yeah. And we see the relatives of Crawford. One relative when asked how he was doing, giving a thumbs up. They, of course, are leaving here with an eased mind. Uh, they were not sure of the situation with him. How are you doing, Chaplain? Chaplain? You see the Chaplain of the Guyana Defense Force here. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, hey, what's up? Must be a tough time for you and the Guyana Defense Force. Oh, definitely, definitely. The, the nation mourns with the country. We, nation, we mourn with the families and the community of the world that uh, we've lost these, these valiant um, and highly distinguished service members. Certainly, yes. It is very difficult. You had a chance to go out there and see the two survivors and meet with them. Uh, what word did you impart with them as a chaplain of this force? Actually, I was, I was observing and 
just supporting the family members. We offered a prayer for them. And um, we have some other pastors who did the same. And I believe that this is the most important part at this juncture, to give them support at this time. I, I, I spoke with the um, one of the survivors and you know, this is this is something that we are still trying to wrap our minds around. And of course, uh, the members of the GDF mm -hmm. who are still out there in those bordering locations, who are mm -hmm. still serving, very trying time for the force. You must be saying some special prayers for them. We are we are praying. We are going around. Um, we, we we are ensuring that the family members that we are in touch with receive not only spiritual support but psychological support. And um, as a chaplain, I am working hard to ensure that we make sure the spiritual life and faith stays very relevant because it's one of those things that we, we somehow um, miss when these situations happen. We get caught up in the emotions, but um, we are working assiduously to ensure that all the members of the force, not only those who are, um, ex ex are experiencing this tragedy, but those who have not experienced it, stay um, focused. Thank you so much, Chaplain. It's a pleasure talking to you, Barbara.